beautiful Coral Gables, Florida, is the site of the biggest game in many, many years for the Miami Hurricanes program and their fans. What they have to do as a student athlete is to concentrate to be the best that they can be. Now a steal by Scott. totally committed to the team and work so hard. The biggest game they say there's been here in many, many years, and Kenny Kaji and the Hurricanes responding to the challenge early. When it's all said and done, when your career is over, look back and you'll have some incredible memories of games you won, of players you played against, of events that occurred on and off the court. All those are great memories for players to take with them, not just for a year or two, but for a lifetime. Any game day, no matter who we're playing, uh, I have a routine that I like to follow. And I try to stick to it as closely as I possibly can because that gets me in the right mental frame of mind. I'd say my workout is, is not really what you would call high intensity. It's, it's just to get the blood flowing, you know, light weight, a little bit of stretching, uh, a little bit of, of uh, uh, leg work and upper body work, but nothing highly intense. It's just to, to get my blood flowing and to get me in the right frame of mind. And all during that workout, I'm thinking about the team and how I want us to be uh, during the shoot around. Okay, back to the office. Each game is different. Every opponent you play is different. So after my brief lifting, I'll go back to the office and throw on a game tape. It might be from our previous game. It might be from a, a game two or three weeks before because the opponent is similar. All right, so what we're looking at here is our second half performance against North Carolina on the road earlier this year. I'll just watch something that we've been doing lately that I want to emphasize. So in the preparation for Duke, I actually looked at our Carolina game from early in the season because both teams play pressure man-to-man -man defense and do a lot of denying. And I wanted to look at our just our offensive segment of how we attack Carolina and how we were successful in Chapel Hill this year. And as I watched, it was consistent with what our plan was going to be against Duke and that was to stretch their defense out a little bit as much as we possibly could and attack off the dribble. Nice to have you here. Good luck, John. Thanks. <laughs> How we doing? Where is everybody? How come you're not taped though? I think everybody assumes that something would be different when you're playing Duke University. Do you get ready differently for that game than you do any other game? And the answer, quite frankly, is no. Every game is important. Duke obviously is a great basketball team. They're number one in the country, and we have to be very well prepared to play against them. But I'd like to think my staff and I spend a great deal of time trying to prepare our players to play great every night. And if we do, and they do play well, we'll get good results. Hey. What's up, baby? How you feel? I'm good. How you? Good. Uh, did Alvarez bang you around a little bit? I beat him. 
If we don't, no matter who we're playing, we're likely to lose that ball game. Raf, you doing all right? Yes, sir. I'm doing well. Our pregame shoot around is is choreographed the same. It's a routine. And although there's a lot of media attention and a lot of people even there in the arena, when we meet at the center circle like we do for before every practice, I told the team, the media is here, they've got a job to do. We have a job to do. One should not interfere with the other. Okay, um, there's a rumor that we have a game tonight. So one, one of the things I, I wanted to mention <laughs> is you guys have already experienced a lot of media exposure anyway throughout your careers. Just remember this, they have their job to do and it doesn't interfere with our job. We have a job to do and that is to stay focused on playing basketball, playing hard, playing smart and playing together. Okay, let them do their job to the best of their ability. We stay focused on doing our job to the best of our ability. Okay, we need a good, solid warm up right now. We're in game mode. We're in the star drill. Duran, get it started. Hands in. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Three. One, two, three. Together. Let's go. Lots of talk. Guard shoot, let's go, let's go. Big guys, nose on the ball. On game day, what we're looking for at the pregame shoot around is energy. What we expect is the guys to talk, to communicate. What we told them the day of the Duke game is because in bigger games, sometimes players get focused on their own performance. Hey, I really want to play well. And so their head goes down, they start thinking about themselves and how they want to play. That's not what we're looking for. I need a ball. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ready? Cool shot. Let's go, Durant. We told them we want you to bring the other players into your circle. Bring everybody in. And the way you do that is talk with them, encourage them, compliment them. And they should do the same with you. Nice pass, nice shot, good cut, call for the ball. Um, when you make a shot, rebound it with two hands and, and let everybody know, I got it, I got it. The more you can incorporate other people into your game, it's like incorporating people into your life. The more you in incorporate other people, the more you will enjoy it because you have other people to share it with. 45 minutes on the clock, we gotta be ready, but that's probably uh, more like uh, 610 than it is uh, 615, okay? Oh, you gotta be dressed and ready at 610. Hands in, guys. Good job. Be ready tonight. Together on three. One, two, three. Together. The word together is chanted every single day to start practice to end to end practice. And basically, what it means is we're all in this together. We each have our own job to do, we each have our own role. We need to help each other to execute that role. But in the end, Win or lose, we win together, we lose together. We do everything together, on the court and off the court. We're a team, and that's what being a part of a team is. We sacrifice for each other. After our pregame shoot around, we have our pregame meal. And uh, again, it's very routine. We eat the same foods, uh, the same time before every home game. And then I go home and relax. I actually take a, a nap for about a half hour. Then I shower and get dressed for the game, and my wife and I come in together. Let's go.
this occasion when we arrive, I normally go directly to my office, but we knew the students had camped out. We had been over there at 12.30 in the afternoon giving out donuts. So I wanted to stop by and thank the students for you know, waiting in line patiently to get into the game. And when we got there, it was unbelievable. The enthusiasm when, when uh, I got out of my car and walked towards the students. Uh, they were chanting and cheering, very, very excited to come to the basketball game and cheer their, their fellow students on. You gotta remember, our players are students, they're friends. And so we went over and we shook as many hands as we possibly could, gave out a lot of high fives. into the office, I knew this was a very, very special night for me, my staff, the team, the University of Miami, all of our students, our alumni, our fans, our faculty. Uh, these are the people that have been supporting Miami basketball for years and years and years. And this is our first opportunity to have the chance to knock off the number one team in the country. Dick Vitale is a legend. Everybody knows who Dick E.V. is because he's been the voice of college basketball since 1979. And I've known him for almost 40 years. And uh, in all my years as a head coach, Dick Vitale never did a single one of my games. Never. Not at Bowling Green, not at George Mason, and not last year at Miami. So it was a real privilege and an honor to have him come that ESPN would send him here, letting us know of the significance of this game, and then having him come to my office and us be able to talk basketball, talk about the game prior to tip off. Go. Quickly give me your assessment tonight. What do you got to do to win? Um, no, yeah, you want some too, right? Go on. The, the very first thing is they're just tremendous in transition. We can't turn the ball over because that's when they're at their best. If, if you turn the ball over, they score a layup. You guys don't turn it right. over either. We're, we've good, been yeah. very good at, at, at yeah. being under control and not turning over too much. Second thing is we got to guard the three because they're a tremendous three-point yeah. shooting team, especially Curry, who's shooting 57%. What about keeping them off the foul line? Uh, I got a phone call at 10 o'clock on Wednesday morning, the, the morning of our Duke game, from Reggie Johnson, who was at the doctor's office and had just had uh, an update uh, on his x-ray of his left hand. His, he had broken his thumb uh, back on December 21st. So uh, we were expecting him to be back in six weeks. And that would have meant sometime in February. 
Instead, Reggie practically jumped through the phone. Coach L, Coach L, it's Reggie. I just got clear to play tonight. And I was in disbelief. I was like, holy Christmas. Reggie had not practiced a single moment. The only thing he had done was the warm-ups. He shot layups and shot some jump shots, sh shot from some free throws on the side basket, but never really had been in any kind of competition or any contact during the, the month that he sat out. So that was big news. But the one thing we didn't want to do was share that with anyone until close to game time. So when Dick Vitale at ESPN came into my office at six o'clock, Dick being a longtime friend and confidant, I felt we, we owed it to him and ESPN to at least share the story so they could prepare the announcement for when the game began. Just before game time, uh, Reggie Johnson's gonna address. He got the go ahead to play tonight. Are you serious? Yeah. He hasn't practiced. Oh. He hasn't, <laughs> hasn't practiced one time well, since he December could 21st. He get minutes? He's going to get minutes. I'm going to play. Now, how many minutes will be based he on hasn't the shot around or anything? He's been, He's been shooting on his own. What we did is what the same thing. It? What thumb it's his left it? thumb, thumb. Non, what ready. we would call a non shooting hand. But when I mentioned it to Dick that Dredgy was going to play, he immediately reached for his cell phone and said, Oh, we got to get this on Sports Center. Go ahead. Just, you don't, just you don't game want, time. What about game. Sports Center? No. No. Can't put don't it on the no. set? No. That's a major story. Yeah, but they don't Eric? want it out before pregame. Who doesn't want it out? You've been trusted, Mr. You Vitale. I wonder what you want me to do. No. Hey, Dick, it's in our open. It what? It's, it's, it'll be in our open, but we're not going to tell sports. Now. Yeah. Reggie doesn't want it out. And we don't want Duke to have it. All right. Yeah. All right. I'll follow your, to, your request. But our sports information director, Amy Woodruff, said to ESPN and to Dick, we want to hold it till game time. Then you can break the news. And he was gracious enough to do that and professional enough to understand the importance of it. My pregame routine is to be in the locker room uh, about 10 minutes before we take, uh, we begin our pregame message. And uh, I sit and read through the game notes, everything I can read about Duke, just to re-emphasize to myself who are their good free throw shooters, who are their good three-point shooters, uh, how, how we want to match up. Every last minute detail is, is kind of uh, envisioned in my mind, uh, things we've prepared for and things we, we need to be sure the players know. Let's look up at the board. Let's be sure we're familiar with their personnel, our matchups, their offensive game plan, their defensive game plan, our defensive game plan, and our offensive game plan. Let's listen to the music. Let's get ready to go. Years ago, I read a book by uh, Phil Jackson, the great coach of the Chicago Bulls and Los Angeles Lakers, and he talked about how music m moves the soul and how they played music in the locker room. And I don't know exactly how he did it, but many, many years ago, we started playing music uh, when I was coaching at Bowling Green State University. And I wanted to create the mood before we took the court. So we want the music to be uplifting, to have a, a nice, fast beat, and get the blood flowing. I've had teams where the players would stand up and start dancing in the locker room. And I really like that because it tells me we're going to have lots of energy that night. And then I'm sitting there and I'm moved by the music as well. And I love to look and glance at the players and see which ones are bouncing around and which ones are sitting quietly. Because the ones who are sitting quietly are into themselves. The ones who are bouncing around are not only into the music, but they're ready to play. All right, let's give Coach Caputo your attention. Let's get ready to go. Mike, guard your yard. So I want you what they do offensively. Well, my assistant coaches do so much of the legwork and prepare the team to be ready to play. 
and I've got a great staff. I delegate a lot of responsibility to them because they're very qualified. They're very talented people and they'll all be excellent head coaches one day. Chris Caputo's job is to explain the opponent. Is create situations for their players to make one-on-one -on -one plays. Michael Huger's job is to go over our defensive game plan. We need everybody on the boards do not leak out. We can't run until we rebound, all right? And Eric Conkle's job is to go over our offensive game plan. On all transition ball screen situations, we want to be the aggressors. Be in attack mode from start to finish. And then I'm the last one to speak, and I just deliver one message. It's normally three things that we have to uh, emphasize on defense and three things we have to emphasize on offense. Three things defensively. We must get back. We can't give these guys easy shots. Second, we've got to take away the three. How do you do that? One guy guards the ball. He's got to know there's four guys in the lane because the way they get their threes, they beat the man guarding the ball and they pitch it out. If there's no room to get in the lane, if we take a light way to the lane, we make it difficult for them to get the threes. The third thing, we cannot give these guys second shots. We've got to be all over the glass. Big guys, guards, chase down the rebounds. The threes bounce, hit the rim and they run. You chase those downs. Offensively, one word describes this game and it's attack. One team is going to be on the attack. That team, when we have the basketball, they're either going to be attacking us with their defense or going by them. Do you understand? We've got to go by their defenders. We've got to have great ball screens, guys sprinting out to get our guards free. The guards going in there under control. Keep it simple. That's the second thing I told you. This is about playing cool, calm, collected. That doesn't mean you play soft. It means you're reading and reacting constantly. And the third thing is you've got to play with confidence. That confidence will come if you talk to each other constantly. Keep talking on defense, on offense. Keep your cool. Don't, I don't want to see any anger, frustration. Are we going to make mistakes? Yeah, we're going to make some mistakes. It's natural. They're going to make mistakes too. The team that keeps its cool and plays with poise down the stretch, that's the team that's going to be in control. That team needs to be us. All right? Play hard. Play smart. Play together. Have fun playing with your friends. You've lived your whole lives for these opportunities. Make the most of it. Let's go. And then the players are ready to take the court. I feel pressure every game. I want to win every game. And, you know, people ask, you know, are you feeling pressure to win this one? Yeah, yeah, I feel pressure to win every game. You know, when I was growing up, I wanted to win every game. I never went into a game as a player thinking, oh, we're going to lose, but I want to play pretty good. I went in with the idea, we've got to beat these guys, no matter how good they are. Because even if a team is better than you, even if they're a lot better than you, that doesn't mean they're going to play a lot better than you that night. And. You know, as they say, it's not one on paper. You, you've got to play the game on the court. 42, Joe Street and McKinney picking him up and it back to Aaron Trent. Okay? Go to work, right from the beginning. I told you, you're in the attack mode. Right now, and forever. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The atmosphere, not the easiest to deal with if you're a visiting team, although, as the folks wearing Duke Blue will tell you, Every game is like this wherever Duke goes. They are used to this. They're back at number one after uh, some other programs lost in the last week. Miami, by the way, has never defeated a top-ranked team. They are 0-6 all-time against number one-ranked teams. As a coach, once the game begins, my mind is totally focused on our team, our players, what we do, how we do it. I'm trying to analyze the opponent, evaluate how we're playing, trying to make subtle adjustments to uh, suggest things to our players that we think will work. And uh, whether it's the crowd, the students, the uh, TV, the media, whatever it is, that's totally blacked out. 
locked out, and focused on our team. In college basketball, teams always go through runs during the course of a game. We'll run off 10 straight points, then the opponent will run off eight or 10, and it goes back and forth. And as a coach, you're never really thinking about the end result, you're thinking about the process. How are we playing now, and what can we do to play better? And during our run in the first half, when we got the, the big lead, my, my question was, when will Duke make its run? Number one Duke <laughs> down 27 points here tonight. This will be as lopsided a loss as Duke has had in about 15 years. And how will we handle it? So at halftime, uh, the, the message to the players was, hey, we had a great run. Expect Duke to come out very, very focused. And what we have to do is come out with the same focus we had in the first half and try to stem that run. The moment they start to go on a run, we've got to run it right back at them if we're going to maintain that lead. And in the second half, we went on the first run and built the lead even further. Shane Larkin has been one of the key reasons why the Miami Hurricanes have a commanding lead on the Duke Blue Devils. And then Duke went on a run, but we had gotten such a lead, it, they weren't able to cut into it so much. But we were playing at a very, very high level, and they didn't have their best game. So we were very, very fortunate that night. The students really helped us. The fans really helped us because they cheered for everything we did, offensively and defensively. Every time we scored, every time we blocked a shot, the crowd was into it. And that energy carries your team. Jim Laranega has just delivered Miami's first ever win over a number one ranked team. When the students stormed the floor, it was an unbelievable feeling. In fact, the security people had already told us before the game that, hey, if we win, the students are planning to storm the floor and the teams are not going to shake hands at midcourt like they do after most games because they didn't want anybody injured, especially our opponents. And I should say, especially our players, I didn't want them hurt either. So our players enjoyed the celebration, our students enjoyed it, and it, it's exciting to have that kind of school spirit generated through a game like this. Uh, first thing is congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you did something that has never been done at the university before the opportunity to play the number one team in the country. Uh, very, very exciting. Our students, our fans came out in, in large numbers. We need to thank them. Be sure to show our appreciation for them. Uh, I also mentioned to the team that when you beat a team like Duke University, who's the number one ranked team in the country, it makes national news. And what that does is it motivates all of our opponents. We will now, for the remainder of this season, have a very large target on our back and every opponent will get up for us like they do for Duke. You did a wonderful job. Enjoy it. Be ready on Friday. It's a, after a day off. And what I said, you got to focus. That's the day you got to come back and be really mentally sharp. Hands in. Right. Hey, hey, hey one, more, one more thing. Kenny, thanks for coming back to practice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah. Playing together is what it's all about, making those kind of sacrifices. So when we chant before practice together and at the end of practice together, we really mean it. Everybody has their own role. Everybody has to execute it. But we're all in it together, win or lose.